some of the best offenses that they're going to run into, particularly one they see twice in a season in Miami. David Dennis Jr. I'm okay with the overturn. His knee looked down slightly before. We can't just give him the first down because of the big guy doing this and the, the type of play it was. Uh, the the okay. Patriots, 52 teams in NFL history have started 0-2 at home. Only two have made the playoffs, so history is wow. not on their side. Yeah, the right. problem with this squad, the defense has been performing well. They played against two of the best teams that you're going to see this season at home, and the defense was handling well, especially uh, Chris, uh, Christian Gonzalez and the way he played in that mm. secondary. But it's that offense that's been spiked, uh, like Belichick was spiking that flag. No 20-yard plays on Sunday, 4.1 yard per play, which would be worse in the league last year. That offense needs to pick it up and sort of help that defense figure things out. So, Tim, some... 0-2 start against two very strong teams, Philadelphia and Miami. Is there optimism or that stat that David Dennis Jr. just gave? Uh, some, some real pessimism here. Not a lot of optimism. I I'm glad that Frank and Courtney enjoyed the play, but let me explain math to America and the rest <laughs> of this panel. When the man falls down, the ball is right at the 29 where it needs to be. But when his knee hits the ground, the ball, he's still up at, say, a 45. And I thought it was an easy call to overturn. These are two tough losses, but I also think New England's playing better than a lot of people thought they would. And uh, in that division, I still think they can try to try to right the ship a little can bit. Can we tough. talk about the block field goal for a second? Because mm. could this be the next tush-push play? Could you see teams bringing the wide sprint in from the edge to block kicks going forward? Or did it just work because it was a surprise, Cordy Cronin? I don't know where he came from. Watching that back, every time I'm like, did he, like, off coming off the edge like that, it clearly messed with the kicker because he sees that out of his periphery, and then it leads to, you know, not the right motion. But Bill Belichick at his core is a special teams guy. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some other teams in this copycat league try a play like that going forward. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great play, and I think you could even see that guy come and then stop. And the, the lineman who's going to block him lets the guy inside him come. So I think there's some variations on this that could work. Very mesmerizing to watch it all play out in, in midair. It's wonderful. I It'll love lead to a lot that. of penalties. Patriots 0-2, another 0-2. Yes, <laughs> Denver Broncos, Sean Payton. To lose a game you had an 18-point lead in, to come back with a Hail Mary, but to fail on a two-point conversion. Oof. There's dispute over the no call here on the two-point conversion. I'll get your take on that. But also Sean Payton reviewing his own team's play, specifically Russell Wilson and his defensive coordinator, Vance Joseph, after the game. There was a number of drives, you know, where we're late with personnel, getting out of the huddle. We took a while. I've got to be better. Russ has got to be sharper with, with getting, it, getting the play out. You know, if we need to wristband it, we will. I didn't think we played well defensively second half i think they were 100 percent every time they entered the red zone they scored a touchdown so denver another 0-2 both losses at home team which david just gave you that great stat it's about a three to four percent chance of making the playoffs tim how is this trending for sean payton not well maybe he needs some more hands on the quarterback maybe that would solve things for him mm -hmm. uh you know he, he made a kind of a fool of himself when he was making fun of nathaniel hackett and how it went last year but eventually, you've got to play games, and he's got to live with Russell Wilson and his flaws. So maybe that is a big part of the problem. Now, they still shouldn't have lost this game. Their defense uh, got run over by Washington in the second half, all those, all those scores in, in the red zone. So, and, and we thought Denver at least had a good defense, even if the offense was iffy. So he's got more problems than he imagined. He David Dennis have. Jr., your review of Sean Payton's first two games in Denver? I know that ain't who I think it is it's talking like that in the press conference after the game. This is the same Sean Payton that said that the problem with this Denver Broncos team was basically they didn't have a competent coach, uh, head coach, and now he's in there in a press conference saying, I had a lot of things I need to work on and enlisted what everybody else in the team had to work on without focusing on himself. The defense, yes, needed some work, but that offense is looking atrocious, especially in that second half. They were talking about Russell, the, the, the amount of time it took for plays to get called last season. Now he's saying it's Russell Wilson's fault that plays were getting called in time. The second half, Russell Wilson only had 52 yards passing. He only had 300 yards for the whole game, and about half of those were in three plays. This offense is what Sean Payton brought here, was brought here to improve upon, and he is not doing his job. So you can talk about what everybody else needs to do. He needs to be better at head coach. Courtney Cronin, your review of Denver's first two games. 
I'm not surprised that Russell Wilson is already under the bus thrown by his head coach because we've seen signs of this trending this direction since Sean Payton got to Denver. Saying that they might need to armband it because the verbiage is too much, like shortening the verbiage so they can get the play call out on time. Who are you dealing with here? This guy went to a Super Bowl at one point in his career. Sean Payton did and Russell Wilson did. So I'm honestly like really baffled that things have gotten so far off the tracks so early into the season. And whatever Sean Payton said about the three timeouts that he had to burn in the first half, that's not all on the offense and the verbiage. This is a pretty undisciplined team as well, Tony. They have 19 penalties this season. That leads the league, 12 of which are defensive penalties. So they've got to become a more disciplined team so they can become a more crisp team with their operation overall. All right, guys, Solder. Well, they were good enough to have an 18-point lead. And by the way, we keep talking about the officials. That was a holding at the end of the game on the two-point conversion. I mean, come on, give me a break. But, you know, Tim wants to give us a math lesson. Let me give you another one on Russell Wilson. Since he signed that contract, he's going this way, Tim. He's been going down. Right now, he's all name, very little game. And Sean Payton's supposed to be the, uh, you know, the quarterback whisperer and the big-time coach. This is going to be an ongoing thing all year long. And right now, Russell Wilson has been kind of quiet. This continues the losing and the head coach tweaking him a little bit. Wait, there's going to be a response. In the division, the Chargers season. lost maybe both games so far. The Raiders are split, and so is Kansas City. Can they recover from this, Frank? Now, I think they can, but wait, wait. Kansas City being 1-1 one and one is a lot different than Denver being 0-2 oh and, and losing their first two games at home. This team, you lose a game like that, and let's face it, too, the Commanders are an okay team. Maybe they'll be a little bit better, but that's, you know, you're not beating a war, uh, you're, you're not losing to a world beater. Last one more story here for an 0-2 oh team. Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. Where was the bounce back I heard about from the panel on Friday? You're getting their mute. Joe Burrow's calf also re-aggravated. Team 0-2, just like last year, re-aggravating that. Courtney, how much of this is about Burrow's calf? And how much could it be something more? The offense is still trying to figure its way here and decide which direction it's going to go after Joe Burrow missed most of the preseason with that calf injury, but this is certainly concerning. And you can look back at history and say, well, they started out 0-2 last year and they made the playoffs, but those weren't both division games. Since, the, since, conference, since division realignment back in the early 2000s, they're the seventh team to start out 0-2 after facing two division opponents. The previous six teams didn't, face, didn't make it into the postseason. Mm, another so good stat. Can, wow. Wow. The concerns I'm the biggest concern here though is Jamar Chase. Five catches for 31 yards. He was an afterthought in this offense, and he couldn't come down with that touchdown in the first half, leads to the short field goal. Where has he been? Why is he so uninvolved here? I think that that's not just on Joe Burrow and the calf, that's on the entire game plan here for Cincinnati. Jr. If you're a Bengals fan, you could take solace in the fact that Joe Burrow is one in seven in the first two games of the season for his entire career. So they've been used to these slow starts and they pick these things up. But that calf, man, that looks to be bothering him even before he tweaked it. He didn't tweak it till the end of the game, and he'd already only had 32 yards in the first half and is 0 for 11 in 15 yards and passes 15 yards or more, which means he's not getting that velocity on the ball that he wants that comes from the lower body. That is a huge concern. And like, like Courtney said, these are division games that they are losing. They're in a lot of trouble. Tim Callishaw, you see it that way? Yeah, I think that's the key. They don't go into the season thinking we're going to lose to Cleveland and Baltimore and be – be 0-2. You can come out to other ways to get to 0-2. They also, even though they're 0-2 last year, that wasn't with a hobbling Joe Burrow. That that looks scary. That can lead to other things. Uh, you, a lot of guys hurt their arm and their back trying to favor ca uh, calf injuries when they come back too soon when they're trying to throw. So I think the Bengals are in. Uh, they have some serious problems ahead of them. Frank Isola. Yeah. And that was their first home loss since they lost to Pittsburgh in week one last year. So they don't lose at home. But to Courtney's point about Chase and Burrow, here's one of the best combinations in the NFL. They really haven't done anything in the first two weeks. And we've seen Joe Burrow, whether it's in college or in the NFL, do it at the highest level. He has performed well in big games. There's something clearly up with this guy. He didn't practice enough. Look at him at the end of the game. You just saw the video. He's not right. Odds makers right now, after two weeks. Seems like everybody's under 50% here that Cincinnati can recover to make the playoffs. Tim? I don't think they're going to be a playoff team. David Dennis Jr.? I don't think they're Courtney a playoff Cronin? team. Courtney Cronin? Too early to write him off. Frank Isola. 
Uh, Joe Burrow's not right. I don't think it's this year. Hard sell that. Welcome back to Around the Horn, coming to you from the Heineken River Deck at Pier 17. You got to do a lot to get past NFL on NFL Monday, but Colorado, Colorado State delivered. Except that hit right there. We have an update on Travis Hunter. Reports are he'll be out three to four weeks. That shot came on a personal foul. Of how many in this game? Personal fouls. No ejection. The heat in this game from all the coaches to all the players were at such a level. And how Colorado came back from the draws of defeat. Sanders drive moment. Shador Sanders. 98 yards and then two overtimes and the storming of the field while being a 23 point favorite. Can you do that? Tim, what to buy, what to sell about this game and that hit and Colorado's comeback and Colorado's storm. Well, I'm selling that the heat got turned a little too high, mainly by Jay Norvell before the game, and that resulted in a hit like that that wasn't an ejection. But I'm buying everything the entire Sanders family has brought to Colorado these first three weeks. I don't know how long it lasts, but even if even if they lose, they're going to sustain something that Colorado hasn't seen in, in, in many, many years, and it's a hell of a show. Debbie Dennis Jr. Yeah, I'm with Tim here. I'm, first of all, I'm selling Jay Norvell and that Colorado State, the way they play, especially beginning of the game, taking on his personality, way too chippy, and that dirty play falls on him as much as the player itself. But as far as Colorado, man, I know that they're missing Hunter. I know they have Oregon and USC coming up. But if they win one of these two games coming up, they are cooking with grease. And if they beat Oregon and they're going to USC undefeated, we're looking at maybe one of the highest-rated college football regular season games we'll ever see. 40 Cronin. I'm buying that Shader Sanders channeled, channeled his mentor and the person whose brand he signed an NIL deal with. He did go into Tom Brady mode there on that 98-yard touchdown drive, the two-point conversion to get this team into overtime. And I'm also buying he did it without Travis Hunter. Four touchdowns, one interception, a 117 passer rating in this game. This only strengthens his Heisman candidacy going forward, and now we get to see against Oregon and USC. They want to shut up any of the other doubters that remain out there about this Colorado team. Now's your chance okay. against All competition. Right. I, I hear you guys, but nobody's hitting pause on the team that had to come back the way they did against a team they were favored by 23 points against. Frank Isola? Yeah, and Oregon's favored by 21 in the next game. You know, the Shador Sanders, that drive at the end of the game, that was his best moment thus far. But why didn't Colorado State just go for it on fourth down? If you get the first down, you win the game. You're going to have to stop him anyway by punting the ball. But to what everyone was talking about with the hit, the referees lost control of this before the game even began. You got a Colorado State, I don't know if it was a coach or maybe a player in street clothes, yelling, getting into it with Shador Sanders. The hit, the player should be thrown out. And why not on un these unsportsmanlike penalties – if you're not going to kick guys out of the game, how about they can't play in 10 plays? I mean, you had offsetting unsportsmanlike penalties. What happens? Nothing. That seems a little odd. As up and down as that was, impossible to look away. What a game. We'll move on. Buy or sell to another 0-2 to talk about the L.A. Chargers. Are they still feeling aftershocks from last postseason where they blew the 27-0 lead? I'm not worried about the Jacksonville loss. The Jacksonville loss hasn't carried on to the season whatsoever. If you've seen our training camp or you've seen the way we played in the first two games, it hasn't had an impact on our team whatsoever. It's a convenient storyline for you and for everybody David, else. Buy yourself, but it's Brandon not the truth. there after the loss in Tennessee. I'm selling this. Maybe it's not the Jacksonville loss itself, but it's what that Jacksonville loss represents. A coach who's lost 13 one-score game, uh, games in his uh, tenure there and a coach who cannot, who's brought in for the defense and cannot stop anybody defensively when it matters. That's what that represents. That's what that team is reeling from. Gordy, buy or sell Staley. I'm buying that he's having an identity crisis, Tony, because what happened to the aggressive coach who used to go for it on fourth down more than anybody else in the NFL, and then you go, then you punt at Tennessee's 44-yard line on fourth and one. This doesn't make any sense. This offense has scored 50 points, not turned the ball over. The 33rd team to do that in the Super Bowl era, the only team to start out 0-2. What's that again? Frank Isola. If he's reprimanding Bill Plasky, I'm all for it, but I... Right, let's put some of this now on the quarterback who gets paid a lot of money. We like, you know, we give the quarterbacks all the credit when the team wins. Justin Herbert has to be better. He's got to find a way to win one of those Jim first. Jim Kalashaw. Hold that home. 
I think Staley's right when he says the players aren't thinking about it, so it's not affecting him like that. But he's wrong, and as David said, this is who they are. They are very capable of blowing leads and being what we consider the Chargers to be, and they do it over That's and over. That's the thing. It's an amazing that they have the same game. Their win probability every game looks exactly like their logo, and then it goes right back down again. <laughs> Tim Kalashaw. Tim knows that. Frank Isola. Thanks for your time. I'm talking to America here. David Dennis Jr., Courtney Cronin, Showdown next. Half time last night, the New York Giants found themselves outscored 60 to nothing in the six quarters of this season. But then they came back from 20 nothing down and 28 7 down to have a comeback of comebacks to beat Arizona. Saquon Barkley sprained his ankle in this one. MRIs today. They're on the short week against San Fran Thursday. You know his availability is going to be in question for that. David, is this a back-to-life win for New York or more concerned after squeaking by Arizona? We're starting with good news on Daniel Jones. No other quarterback in NFL history in the second half has had more than 250 yards, 50 rushing yards, multiple touchdowns, a rushing touchdown, and no turnovers. Bad news. Wow, that's what right. it took to beat a Cardinals team that is actively trying to lose games. This should have never been that close, and they're going to lose to the 49ers on Thursday and be 1-2 and two anyway. Mm -hmm. Courtney? They look different in the second half, which is very promising for the adjustments that they made. The 21-point comeback, great, but there are a lot of holes still on this team. Lack of pass rush, the offensive line, and of course the Saquon injury just barely helping them avoid. Other than that, how was the comeback, Mrs. Lincoln? Okay, uh, guys, I gotta say it. Masterclass in stats today from both of you. Get an extra point. We'll move on. Feels like we spent the whole day talking about 0-2s. How about some surprise 2-0s, huh? Whether you believe in them or not, Atlanta Falcons starting the year 2-0. Haven't been there in a while. Tampa Bay Buccaneers starting the year 2-0. And, oh. and the Washington Commanders 2-0. and oh. Who, if any, has earned your trust so far, Courtney? This is not the same Washington team of a year ago, Tony. They would have folded had their backs been against the wall, down 21-3 with nine minutes remaining in the second quarter. To rattle off the biggest comeback in, franchise history, in, franchise, in the franchise in 33 years is a pretty big deal. David? That's the same Commanders team that almost blew a Hail Mary, you know, lost a Hail Mary to that Denver Broncos team that's not good. I'm going to go with the Falcons. Bijan Robinson is a superstar. They had the most impressive win of the season so far for a 2-0 team. Split the point, and we'll move on to Showdown 3 because there are bad beats and there are whatever happened with the Rams and Niners last night. It was a 10-point game with four seconds left. How often do you see teams do what the Rams did. Kick the field goal so they only lose by seven? The spread was seven and a half in some places. Fantasy owners are losing their minds. Let me ask you, David, should NFL fans question that kick? They shouldn't question their kick. They should question their hobbies. This is why you don't gamble on a scripted sport like the NFL. Gamble on professional wrestling like I do. Mm, Gordy Cronin? This is what some will say is the best coaching decision of any coaching decision in week two. Sean McVay, whether he knew the spread or not, he was not asked about it after the game, so he gets How off was he not right asked here. about it Better after the game? Even if he was just going to say, I wanted some extra reps for special teams. Courtney Cronin, 30 seconds of face time. You'll remember I was talking about Denver's penalties, 12 of which defensive fouls this year. Kareem Jackson, not in the right side of any of that. He was not suspended for his hit on Logan Thomas, a head-to-helmet, helmet-to-helmet contact in the game last night. He also injured Jacoby Myers, was out with a concussion for week two. He's playing from a different era. You can't have these sorts of hits going forward. He should have been suspended. He should also receive a hefty fine. That's our time. We'll see you tomorrow.